Hello and welcome to this video. Gareth here from tastyattitudes.com. Now, when I design for anything, especially for print, before I jump onto the computer, I usually start on paper, sketching out my ideas and thinking about how I might want to lay out my design or focus on various design elements or details. Now, these drawings might not only be for my personal development. I might have to share these with other creative people such as web developers, 3D designers, photographers or animators if I need to communicate an idea to someone else to do part of a job. In the industry, these drawings are often referred to as scamps. So what are scamps? Well, to put it simply, a scamp is a drawing or a sketch of an idea. These are created to bring to life and visualize an idea and share them with others. Now, a scamp can be a quick idea you had in a coffee shop, a simple doodle on a handkerchief, or a work of art. Scamps are used in the industry to communicate, so depending on how much you want to communicate, you can draw your scamp accordingly. Now, scamps are great because they make it easy to kick off projects. They can be a focus of discussion with other designers, which can help quickly refine or determine a creative direction. Scamps are also important as clients love to see ideas grow and employees like to see how you can come up with ideas. So it's great to have examples of this in your portfolio. So let's start by taking a look at some examples. So with the project folder open, I'm going to navigate to the second folder, Scamp Design. I'll open this and then open up this Scamp example PDF document inside. If you wish to follow along, you can get this document in the project folder. Link is in the description. With the document open, let's begin. So here on page one, we have an example of a rough sketch layout. This is for an A5 portrait three page leaflet. The example on the left is the initial idea, how the designer planned out the pages. We can see here how the designer considered the fold mechanism, how it would fold in on itself to an A5 portrait. To the right is a more detailed plan of how the designer managed the composition of type and how the images would be placed. Here the designer has drawn a crude grid and highlighted the various elements in grey. This is an example of a raw thought process, nothing fancy. This sketch would exist only to capture the imagination in that moment and to serve the designer's personal development. But what if the designer wanted to communicate this to a client? Surely the designer would need to include more detail to capture the imagination of the client. So on the next page is a more detailed drawing based on the previous crude sketch. Here the designer has included sketches showing more detailed consideration of photo crops, compositions, possible colour of type and colour effects on the front cover. This scamp would be adequate to show the vision of the overall layout. Now a sketch and scamp like this, depending on how fast you can draw, would only take an hour or two to develop. Creating a layout like this on computer may take twice the time. This is why scamps are used a lot in industry. This would mean coming to conclusions much faster and moving design forward. So next is an example of a storyboard for an advert. Here, the designer has chosen not to use any colour, just grey and bold pen strokes to emphasise focus. Here we can see how the designer is suggesting camera angles and close-ups in various keyframes. Now, this may not be the best drawing in the world, but the key idea and vision of the designer has been communicated. Next, we have a scamp of a poster example. This example is similar to the previous, where the designer has used no colour to focus purely on composition. This scamp is to outline the initial layout of the poster. Next, we have an A4 paper leaflet cover and back design. In this example, we can see how the designer has used marker pens to capture the essence of the layout and used a red pen to highlight some of the key messages. Here we can see, also in red pen, around the scamp how feedback has been related back to the designer. Here we can see the client would like to remove the image grid on the back, the mugshot on the cover, and make the background image larger at the base. This is a good example of how scamps can work to quickly answer a brief and push a layout forward. This would ultimately save time when 
you or someone else has to get onto the computer to create this. Next, we can see more scamps from the designer and how he has envisioned the product arrangement, typesetting and grid structure of the layout. Notice for body copy, we have simple lines and for headers and key type, it's been written in caps. These are all common mechanisms to create emphasis. What you want the eye to be drawn to and what are the most important parts of the layout. Next, we have a scamp for a print advert in a supermarket. Here, the designer has chosen to use more color, perhaps because this scamp was passed on to a photographer and the designer felt more detail would be required. To the left is the designer's vision of how they would want the products to be composed. This scamp was created and passed over to a photographer. From the scamp, the photographer was able to compose the products and take the shot to match the reference drawing. Here we can see the photographer did a pretty good job matching the drawing there. So finally we have some scamp examples a designer has visualized to communicate some complex ideas to a client. Here we can see how the designer is thinking about the user journey and the use of paper folds in order to present a message in a clear, concise and structured way. So that's a few examples of how designers have used drawings to visualize, develop and communicate their ideas. At design school, we were always told to draw before we got onto the computer, and I would agree and recommend it myself. In my experience, I find drawing scams keep the design process fast, creative, and it's a great way to communicate and share ideas with others before spending lots of time building the idea on computer. Also, you may have a great idea today, for a problem tomorrow, so it pays to document your thoughts for later. What you will also find is that drawing is more abstract than simply setting out layouts on computer. You may just find that it will inspire you to discover other ideas along the way. Now, some of you may be asking, what if I can't draw? Well, I'd say practice. Look at the scamp example document I just demonstrated. In there, you can see a range of approaches, some more detailed than others. Every designer should be able to draw to some degree as it's an important tool to communicate visually. If you're not currently in the habit of creating scamps, give it a try. Trust me, you will find it more rewarding. So in this video, we have just looked at what scamps are and how they are important to the design process. In the next video, we are going to begin the design process of creating the stationery for the fictional brand. In the next video, I will be showcasing how I developed the ideas for my design using the same process shown in this video. I'm going to produce a series of scans and I encourage you to follow along and create your own layouts. So see you in the next video.